this demonstration we're going to have a quick look at the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit or otherwise known as MAP. It's a solution accelerator that analyzes the inventory of an organization's server infrastructure. It'll perform an assessment and then create reports that we can then use for upgrade and migration plans. MAP is available for Windows Server 2016, Windows Server 2012 R2, Windows 10, Windows 8.1 and for other products such as SQL Server 2014 and also as well Hyper-V. So what we've done just on our Windows 10 box here is we've already installed the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit. So we'll just launch it up. And the first thing to prompt me to do here is just create a database. So we'll just select cancel at this point here. But what we can see is within Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit, just on the overview page at this point here, we can create and select our database to store our information. What we've also got as well is we've got different scenarios. So for example, what we've got here is we've got cloud. So we can look for things like Azure VM readiness, capacity, if we come to desktop, we can do information or collect information relating to our desktops, our servers. We have Microsoft assessment and planning for things like desktop virtualization, server virtualization. If we come to the database, this is where we could do our SQL server discovery as well. Have a look at our usage tracking. So at this point here, all we're going to do is just figure out exactly what it is we're actually using. And then if we go to our environment, so on our environment, we'll get information relating to the environment that we have in place. So we've got Windows environment, Linux environment, performance metrics. So the first thing we'll do at this point here is we actually haven't got anything to assess as of yet. So we'll just come back to our overview page. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to perform an inventory. So what we're going to do is we need to create, select our database. We need to give it a name. So we'll just fill out the name. We're going to call inventory and select OK. Next thing we need to do at this point here is we're now going to perform an inventory. And what we're interested in here is we're interested in Microsoft components. So we're going to go for Windows computers. We'll just go for our Exchange server. We'll go for Link server. We'll scroll down a little bit further. We're also interested in SQL server. And finally, what we're interested in as well is we're going to move a few things across to Azure. So we'll go for our Windows Azure platform migration as well. And if we scroll it down, we can see there's other options as well. So it is quite comprehensive in what it will do for the inventory. Then what we'll do is we'll just select next. Then it brings us into our discovery method. So at this point here, what we're actually going to use is we are going to use Active Directory. And what we'll also do as well is we'll go for scan an IP address range. As you can see, we can specify things like Windows networking protocols, SCCM, we can manually enter computer names or we can import them from something like a CSV file. So at this point here, what we'll do is we'll select next. It's going to ask us for our Active Directory credentials. And what I'm going to specify at this point here is the domain will be a datum.com, domain account, a datum backslash administrator, and I've specified the administrator password. Then we'll come down and select next. I'm happy with the option at this point here to find all computers in all domains, containers and organizational units rather than scan specific domains, containers, organizational units. So what we'll do is we'll just select next. We just need to specify our IP address range. At this point here, I'm going to start with 172.16.0.1 and go all the way through to 172.16.0.100. Not going to bother with any additional IP address ranges, so we'll select next. I'm just going to use the administrator account, so I'm not going to create a specific account for actually collecting the information, so we'll just select next. At this point here for the credentials order, it says up the top here we can prioritize the list of all computer credentials for each collector technology. I'm not going to bother modifying any of this, we'll just select next. I'm happy with the port number selecting for the technology PowerShell, so we'll select next. Now at this point here, all we'll do is we'll just read through the summary. We're happy with everything in the summary, so at this point here we'll select finish and this will then go away and do a scan. So as we can see now, we've now done the scan, so inventory success, yep, 82%, so 680 machines found, 505 of them have actually been inventoried, and 87% here perform collection success as well. So at this point here, we now have something we can go away and actually do some sort of assessment on. First thing we'll do here is we'll just come to cloud. So within cloud, what we can see here is Azure VM readiness, so we've got 48% of the machines are actually ready to go. We can see the Azure VM capacity. So what we've got here successfully sized 229. If we click into the box, what it'll do is it will bring up some additional information relating to what it is we've actually scanned against. We've just come to desktop. And what we've got on desktop, we've got our Windows 10 readiness, Windows 8.1 readiness, Windows 7. 
So as you can see here, it's giving me some information. And then what we can do at this point here is, for example, I'm interested in some information relating to Internet Explorer. So we'll click on the Internet Explorer task box here. So what we can see is 204 total IE browsers. We've got eight of my Internet Explorer 11, 36 at 10. So as we can see at this point here, we went away, we scanned our environment, it's reported back some information. We can then use this information for not only documentation purposes, management purposes, we can also use it as well for upgrade purposes or migration purposes. And that's the end of this demonstration of having a look at the basic functionality of the map toolkit. Thank you.